Reveille, reveille, reveille. Wake up, wake up, wake up. This is Tony Glenn with the Situation Report. This is our first podcast where we highlight veterans, veterans in business, and busting all VA home loan myths. Today I have with you Jay and Nelson Coburn, a United States Marine Corps realtor and a United States Marine Corps veteran. Welcome to the show. What's going on, guys? How you doing? <laughs> all right. So the, the whole purpose of this podcast is that we're just going to talk a little bit about you know, your home buying process, you know, what was the hardest part, Jay? Uh, what was the hardest part about you buying your, your home out here in California? I think, honestly, the hardest part would probably be dealing with someone I didn't really know. You okay. know, I, I think it's always the misconception. Are they trying to sell me? Yeah. Right. Are they trying to just make their commission? So trusting somebody with buying your home and, and spending X amount of money is always something to think about, right? It's, it's, it's a game of tug of war. How much is he really being honest versus how much <laughs> does he want to get paid? Yep, I, I totally understand that. How, how did you guys meet? A uh, mutual friend, uh, one yep. of my um, really good uh, family friends, uh, Angel Rodriguez, who's also now a uh, retired Marine. Uh, we're, you guys were together. We're in MSG uh, together. MSG together. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy, man. The Marine Corps is a small, it's such a small world, man. And, you know, you you what bought me in real estate, the same kind of, the same thing, right? Uh, I, I wanted to educate service members on, your, you know, their VA entitlement because it was so many misconceptions. Um why California? Um, Let's hear the history, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be, to be honest, I'm born and raised in Queens, New York. Uh, my son was uh, born here. So I just really wanted to be a lot closer to my son, uh, for lack of better words. Uh, and honestly, the weather, you know, I'm, I've been here long enough. But I am back and forth uh, between New York and California. You know what? I've never been to New York. Uh, everybody says that it's pretty cool out there. It's like a lot of opportunity. There is. There is. I mean... You, you really can. There's opportunity everywhere, honestly. Yeah, that's that's really cool. Um, so Nelson, so tell us about the uh, the process, especially in this market. What was the challenge that you face uh, regarding the the home buying process? I think the biggest challenges that I face is getting to know the buyer and what what their mission and goal is. And once I can narrow down what that is, then it can really help me find that right fit home for them. Um, so obviously, we didn't know each other. So getting to know him, seeing the homes that he was sending me and the things that we were looking for and he, what he was talking to me about kind of honed in on that until we found the right place. That's really cool. How many, how many houses did you actually show him? Not many. I, honestly, I was, I was, tops. What, our first phone call, we're both Marines. So I, once he told me he was a Marine, I kind of just, I'm very assertive and aggressive how I speak. That's that New York. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> that New York I think yeah. we text for like five minutes and I just called him directly and yeah. I said, listen, I'm not going to, I said, right. I'm not going to waste your time. Don't waste my time. This is what I want. That was the introduction. Via that, that was. That That's, was that you know what? Was. <laughs> that, I was like, bet. I'm like, this is going to be easy. He's going to tell me everything he needs. I what figured he wants. I'd, I'd set the pace and that would give him the opportunity to choose whether he wanted to work with me or not. I know I'm a lot like when it comes to speaking about business. Right. I told him what I wanted, how I wanted. I even told you, I said, I'm not ready to buy right this instant, but we can start having the conversation to get the ball rolling and we'll buy in four to five months. And we did that exactly. Yep. That's insane, man. And you know what? What's crazy about it is that so many people are afraid to jump, you know, but they have wings. Just jump, you know, get in there, start figuring it out. And especially picking someone who understands VA. I'm going to tell you all a fun, something crazy. Less than 1% of the realtors have served in the armed forces. Do you think, Nelson, do you think that that's, uh, that that's a, a statistic that's important for veterans that are searching for properties? Yeah, Absolutely. Um, the things that Marines have gone through or are currently going through on active duty to have a realtor that's dealing with such a big amount of money and the uncertainty and all the things that are going on in their day-to-day -day life, um, trying to be out there accomplishing the mission for America, um, having someone that doesn't have that experience of what they're going through, like I'm sending him things, how come he's not responding, you know, I've called him, <laughs> like, yeah, because he's in the field or, you know, he's training or he's taking care of his Marines. So I think it's better um, that more uh, people that were served – continue to serve other service members to buy a home because they understand what they're going through. That's, that's really, really cool, man. Was there any, a time during the process that you doubted your decision on the home? That I doubted my, no, I'll be honest. There was a few hiccups in the road and, and I'll tell you. <laughs> oh, tell us that. We want to hear the juicy <laughs> stuff, I'll, man. I'll you, Let's go, baby. It, it, there wasn't any, you know, it's like you train a dog to sit, try to train him to unsit, right? Right. Trying to train a Marine who got out to, not like to give civilians justifiable, like I'm very big on communication, right? Right. We're very like strategic. So like, there wasn't, there was good communication, but it wasn't the type of communication I wanted because I am a Marine. Right. Right. So like perfect example, I would text, I would text, text the loan officer 
And they'd answer me when they got around to it. Him and I text, and he just calls me. Right, right, right. I expect like that, you know. So it wasn't, you know, like I told him, little stuff like that bothered me, but that's also my personal, you know, barrier with being a civilian now. Right. Not right. everybody acts the way we do, right? <laughs> that's true. At the end of the day, so I have to, I have to acknowledge that. So that for me, that was a small hiccup. But I told him, you know, like I told you, right when I closed, I said the only reason I really closed on the house because I'm a very impulsive individual and I will walk away from a deal. It's just because I got a great feeling from him. He did take care of me a lot. And also, even though I didn't meet him as a first sergeant, I do acknowledge him as a first sergeant. I think I called you first sergeant the first day. Yeah, you did. I was like, I'm, <laughs> I'm missing Nelson Cole. I, I feel like it's, for me, because it's so disrespectful, right, to acknowledge somebody. I've been in the Marine Corps 10 years or right. was in the Marine Corps 10 years. Mm -hmm. I, I feel uncomfortable not addressing you as such. So I, I did feel like as a first sergeant, my experience is leadership, true welfare. They took, he took care of me. And I, and I did feel that. I did feel that 100%, which to touch back on your question, it is important that my realtor be a prior service member, 100%. You can only sympathize and understand to a certain extent. That's true, man. That's true. Exactly. It's so imperative, man. And that's kind of like why we kind of we built this movement or even just bringing this podcast is because you don't, you, it's very, very difficult, you know, for us to communicate uh, uh, belly to belly with people who are, don't understand, you know, what it's like to serve and how important it is with time management. That's a big, big thing, right? So we're so used to getting things right away. And then I also had that same issue as, you know, when I was buying my properties with communication as well. And then I had to step back and say, you know what? It's going to close, right? <laughs> it will. Right? It'll work itself out. You're going to get a couple of punches in the faces because it's a big purchase, right? So sometimes you just got to roll with the punches and just know that, hey, you're going to get some labor pains. It's all about the baby, right? I think, I think as Marines, we're just so used to being proactive, yep, right? Because we say in the yeah. Marine Corps, be, don't wait around for stuff to happen. Yep. So happen. I think with like, you know, the paperwork, documentation, it's like, listen, if you need it, I'll go get it right now and I'll do it for you. And then as Marines, we end up doing their job, Yep. right? We're like, listen, I'll do it for you. You need to make copies, I'll go do the copies. Right. We're, not, we're not too big to do the small stuff, right? And do all the big stuff. I don't mind. If I have to run around, do copies, pull my own tax you know, report, I'm cool with it. Right. You know, just, just get it done now. That's good, man. I mean, this is really good. And this is, you know what? This is raw information straight from a veteran and a service member that served in the real estate side and then also the actual client um, end user on regard to going through the process. So Nelson, what, what else do you have to add? Yeah, that's, I mean, that's why I wanted to be a realtor was that I could still be that kind of like a first time, right? I'm not wearing the rank, but I'm still taking care of people. Right. And, and I enjoy it now that I'm out of uniform, I'm still be able to give back to the service members and their families and make sure they got a solid home and they're taken care of so they can continue the fight. Yep. It, now, Jay, I do have a question for you. Yes. Um, what was the, uh, you're a civilian now. Yes. Right. Um, what was your, the hardest transition for you, uh, transitioning out of the Marine Corps into the civilian sector? So to be totally honest, I joined the Marine Corps in 05 as an SMCR. Okay. As a joint, as a reservist. Okay. So typical one week in a month, two weeks out of the year. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't really get to fulfill any, much of that because I jumped on active duty, which is mobilization orders. So it's not full time. Oh, okay. it's, it's not like um, a three to, it's not a PCS. Sure. So reservists are allowed to fulfill mobilization orders depending on the criteria. Two D, you know, sergeant, one up, one down, billet available for one year. Um, so at the time I just kept hopping on mobilization orders. It was great. Uh, it was a way to fulfill active duty, do what I wanted to do compared to the Marine Corps where they tell you. So there's actual, there was a website you can check and be like, oh, that looks pretty cool. I kind of want to go there. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I love being the Marine, but it, it's hard being told what to do. So if I can, <laughs> it, it is, it is. That's it, why you're a business owner. Well, yeah. Well, also, but I love being a Marine. So I wanted to meet myself halfway. How right. can I still be a Marine, but I don't want to go to Oki if I don't have to. Right. Mm -hmm. Once I found out that it was mobilization, orders, I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. I can go to Quantico by choice and I can stay there as long as I want and leave if I want to leave, terminate early. So, I mean, you know, I, it was, it was, I loved it. The transition, I've always had a civilian job while I was on active duty. Even while I was on active duty, I worked at first, I was at first MLG and I worked at nine, five eyewear. Oh, that's crazy. Doing advertised marketing, you know, a sales rep at the time. Um, I've, I've done advertised marketing at another company called source magazine, which is a hip hop magazine from the East coast. From back in the day, if anybody. The Source. The Source, yeah. Really? Well, I, had, I had asked him. He didn't know what it was. <laughs> you did the Source magazine? Come on, man. He doesn't know. <laughs> you already know. Yeah. Hey, look. You already know why I know about the Source magazine, all right? <laughs> so you got all that Source swag. magazine, you know? Bible of hip-hop yeah. at the time um, for those that read paper. Right. even exist. That's true. Uh, so I've always had both. Uh, so transitioning wasn't too hard. And I think you and I had this conversation recently. I noticed early because I was, uh, I'm an old one. I transitioned Marines out. 
I noticed that all the really good Marines who dedicated their life to the Marine Corps, unfortunately, had nothing when they were getting out. Wow, that's and powerful, sad. Man. It's sad. You know, I've met sergeant majors, decorated staff sergeants, and amazing Marines. Never take anything from them, but because I played, I've gotten to be both. I was like, these guys don't realize when you get out, no one really cares. No one does. So thank you for your service, and that's Man. it. You were a first sergeant. No one cares. No yeah. sense. No, it's but true. it's true. It's, it's, true. it's a sad it's reality a that a lot of Marines don't realize that getting out, and I don't know if you can cuss on this, but no one gives a fuck. That's true. It's, it's, it's the truth. It's, it's the truth. You know, it, it's sad. And, and also, I, I did recruiting a lot with Rodriguez Angel. I've also learned no one forces us to do this job. That's true. Yeah. You know, a lot of people thank us for, for, for our service. And a, a great rebuttal that I, that I was taught was just thank them for the support. Oh, we don't recruit. Dope. Listen, we're not, we're not, yeah. rec we're not recruiting the majority of our individuals from Harvard. We're not pulling people away from their careers. Honestly, for me, I'll speak for myself. Volunteer. I didn't have much going on. I was yeah. a punk kid from the streets. You know, I went from, I went to a high school that had a 3% graduation rate. Mm. You know, I went to Newtown High School in Corona, Queens. It was a really bad school. I didn't have much of a future or at least a, a structure or foundation. So the Marine Corps actually helped me more. I needed the Marine Corps more, more than, than the Marine Corps needed bam. me at the end of the day. That's so when people fact. thank me for my service, I appreciate it. But I really thank them for their support. That's more important. That's that's crazy. Did y'all hear that, man? You're Listen. You have to rewind that. Yes. I'm going <laughs> to tell you something. The biggest thing that I also seen too, and I kind of want to expand on that, that he said that was very powerful, is that you have to pre prepare for your exit strategy. Treat life like a game in, your, in, the, in the military. You know, you have first, second, third, and fourth quarter. And you should do it in segments, right? So when you come into Marine Corps, it should be 90% Marine Corps, 10% you, 100%, yeah. right? And then when you get to the second quarter, it should trickle down, it's 65, like 35, it's shifting. right? It is shifting, 75, 25. And then on your last five years, especially if you're doing a 20-year uh, stint, right, or if you're spending that time in, you got to have an exit strategy, a financial exit strategy. At least a plan, and you're starting to execute things the main, as the much main, as you the can. Main, the main problem is the Marine Corps can't provide you with that because as a business, right, as an institution, their job is to retain you and have you Marine. If you're a Marine thinking on your exit strategy, you're not focused on your objective. Mm. That's true. Yeah. And you can't blame the Marine Corps because that's how any good Mission corporation works. Mission accomplishment. Right. Right. At your, at your, at your compromise. Right. Because right. the Marine Corps doesn't lose. They only lose if you start focusing on that first sergeant who's working on his real estate license and he's not, you know, it's, it's, it's true. Though. It's, it's true. <laughs> Look, Nelson over there about to take his yeah, microphone it's off. He's thing. like, a uh, uh, break. <laughs> it's the first thing, but you got to think about it. As much as we all have been Marines, you got to think about yourself. It's like true. When you, when you get your DD-214, it, it, it stops. It, it was it was really hard. Like It's got to be, especially for people. I, I didn't Marines. know how to turn off work. Like I, For me, it was all about the Marines. I can so imagine. when I was, knew I was going to get out, I, you know, my appendix day was already dropped. I knew on my retirement date. I, I, I stressed, man. I was thinking like, damn, you know, I got I to gotta stop doing what I love and then transition. And then whatever, what's that plan? What's that look like? But you know what? I, I feel that the, the Marine Corps gave me the tools while I was in, the time that I've been in, that I was successful in i feel like i was successful so why can't i be successful out so you just got to reattack in a different direction i i totally I, agree i always tell people it's it's mission accomplishment right it's a different mission same objective absolutely you're just you're wearing a different uniform that's yeah. all it is and that's the mentality taps class is such a waste of time i'll be i'll be totally honest they don't they don't, they don't teach you for they don't teach <laughs> yeah, you for real it. life hey, didn't hear i'm keeping first. it real they, they don't teach, they, don't, they don't they don't prepare you for real life and it should start with opening should be like listen thank you for your service no one cares that's the truth. That's, that's the Was reality. Drill, were you a drill sergeant, Jay? <laughs> no. Our hat's going to be eating this up. That, that's that, New that, York, that, man. That, that's yeah. got to be the reality. That, that every We speak for Marines. I don't speak for other services, but that we should face as a Marine getting out. No one cares. Let it go. Because we joined the Marine Corps, right? And it teaches pride. People, we're, we're one of the most prideful fucking services out there, right? Yep. Absolutely. I'm pretty sure at some point we all wore our dog tags in front of our shirt, <laughs> right? We were all happy. But the truth of the matter is, all that aside, that's all that you really got out of the Marine Corps. Nothing, nothing matters after that. You did it for yourself. No one cares, and, and, you, and you shouldn't. And it got to a point, I, I used to be very proud, right? Like, walk my chest out like they taught us. And then I got stationed in different places. And little by little, what, what I thought made me a Marine wasn't tattoos and uniforms and showing my dog. I don't wear my dog tags anymore because what makes me a Marine is myself. I did it for me. Yep. So that was the biggest transition, number one, of maturing from an 18 year old who joined the Marine Corps to at 30 years old getting out. I didn't need a uh, you know to, that USMC sticker on my car, the dog, you know the plates to prove to anyone. It's already in you. It's, it's in your heart, man. It's already in you. And I think you learned that at least for me on my second and third enlistment. My first one, I'm just so happy I, I have a fucking legit check. <laughs> I got a paycheck. <laughs> this is great. Yeah. You know, people love me because I'm a Marine. You know, honor, courage, commitment. I remember. But, yeah, exactly. You know, but like I said, 34 years from now, you realize you do that for yourself. You know, that's true, man. You know, one, one what I hear right now is that. 
regardless of if you served in the armed forces, it's in your blood. It's in your DNA, 100%. right? Don't hide yeah. it. And then, yeah, Use it. you don't, have, yeah. And then, you know, once you, it, it, it's a culture, right? The Marine Corps is a culture. And then when you step outside of that culture, you still have to be able to transition. You have to have a, you know, that, that feeling in your heart to where you're going to transition into something else. And it seems like you did that very well. You have a business, right? Yes. Yes. I, I run a small business. Um, I run a small business. Yes. I've actually run a few small businesses. I've successfully failed six times. You, the, you hear that? You're winning. Fa yes. Okay. So <laughs> I have successfully failed six times. Can you give us a little bit about your business? Uh, the one now? Yeah. Yes. The business yeah. Uh, I run and operate with a small team. Um, we do pins. Enamel pins, lapel pins. Like the one on your hat. Like the one on my hat, yeah. Okay. So it's more of a, <clears throat> a pin brand to touch into the subculture of streetwear. It's a fashion accessory. We design pins, my team and I, from stupid sayings to whatever is nostalgic. I mean, I'm 34. My art director is 26 or 27. If I'm wrong, Raul's going to hate me. Uh, and our most latest intern is a freshly graduated SDSU student who's 21, 22. So it's like sometimes he'll say things for pins and I'll be like, I guess that's what's cool. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not 22, you know, roadblocks. Yeah. Exactly. And then, and then Roblox. I'll say things and he'll be like, you're freaking outdated. And I'm like, no, that's going to do well for people in my demographic. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, so honestly, I just wanted to create a business where I could have fun and it's going to sound kind of contradicting. I wanted to create a, a business for myself where I can be as lazy and irresponsible on my level. After right. 10 years of being told where to be terms. on my terms. Come on, dog. Give us that plug, man, because I know about lapel plans. You know, you put the pins on your on your suit. You can rock it on your hat. You can do a bunch well, of stuff. He's making me some. So, 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 yeah. Already. So, we also, we also, there's two sides of the business. We have a brand, which is the fun stuff, right? We have pins like Super Nintendo pins, uh, funny sayings, uh, cuss words, whatever, right? And then we have the production side, which we do production for small co uh, other companies. Uh, some of the companies we've done production for MTV, Wild and Out. Oh, wow. uh, companies like Breakout LA, which is a sneaker company, Urban Necessity, Sneaker Lab, and other small businesses. I know we're doing his pins for his company. They make for great advertising and marketing material. Sure. You know, just some people hand them out, some people give them away. Uh, but honestly, for me, I just really wanted something that, that didn't provide any type of stress. Uh, and it's fun. It, it, at the end of the day, I Boom. have fun doing this. I love it. So y'all hear that, right? You have several entrepreneurs up here talking about their business, their transition. We also talked about the home buying process as well. Um, what advice would you give someone that's looking to two things? I'm gonna ask you two questions before we close both of you guys. So Jay, what advice would you give someone that is interested in starting a small business as a veteran? Um, as a veteran, use all your resources. There's tons of resources. You just have to ask them those questions and you really got to ask and don't take, if you're not happy with the answer, find that some, find somebody who's going to give you that answer. I'm very, very persistent. Definitely. Uh, yeah, 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 I'm very, very <laughs> persistent. Like the word no doesn't exist to me. I'll just find another way to get a yes. Uh, and your friends and family might tell you you're wasting your time and you're crazy. I've been doing this for four years. Uh, when I first told my friends and family that I was going to operate and, and run a, a pin business, a lot of my real friends told me like, you're going to fail. You're not going to make money. What the hell are pins? Uh, and now it's four years later and we're doing great. <laughs> you know what? I, I want to say something. People will give you advice on things that they've never done. done. Yep. 100%. How are you going to give me advice on something that you've never done yourself? So don't let people, you know, my key takeaway, if I'm not, um, if I'm correct is, you know what, whatever it is that you want to do, you just do it and, and follow your instincts because a seed in your pocket will not grow. Right. You got to put it in the ground. People are going to support you as far as, as far as their own personal mm -hmm. limitations. Absolutely. Cause they think they can't make it. They think you can't make it. You know? So that project that energy on you. Mm -hmm. Man, exactly. and, you can, and, you can, and you can't blame them. You can't blame them because you can't expect people to, 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 to live, like I tell people all the time. They don't understand. Don't live, don't, don't work for your dreams. Because even your dreams are, are, are limited sometimes, right? If you're a kid who's never been anywhere, never seen the world, your, your smallest dream might be, I want to travel to Florida. Like, listen, there's a whole other world out there. But it's not their fault. So dream past your dreams, mm. realistically. That's, that's right? Weird. Sometimes we're, dream we're, we're, we're exactly, we're so surrounded by, our, by our, 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 our product of our environment, right? You know, some kids might be like, I want a Mercedes, they don't know there's a whole other world of there of dreams. Like, like for me, my dream was to buy time. My oh, Mondays man. and Tuesdays are very, <laughs> very relaxed. I didn't want to be a millionaire. I, I, I cut that dream a long time ago. 
I wanted time. I found a way to buy myself time. Yeah, that's more than money. That's, that's more than money. More and, than and you money. don't realize until you get older how important time is, right? Absolutely. I'm, I'm 34. At 21, I thought 30 would never happen. I was like, nah, that's, that's, yeah, that's never happened. I'll never turn 30. That's old. You know, that's outdated. At 34, I could truly say I found a way to buy myself time. That's what's insane, man, because the reason why, the, the reason why I love this platform is because I can relate, you know? I can relate. The more money I had, the more miserable I was in the business. Oh, yes. Right? But the more time that I have with my children and everything else, you can't, it's, it's, you can't, it's priceless. It's priceless. The value exactly. is crazy. People always tell me, like, why don't you want to be a millionaire? You're limiting yourself. And I'm like, I could if I worked 80, 90 hours right. and spent the next 20, 10 years, 10 right? Years. Realistically, yeah. 10, five years, make a million dollars. It's not impossible. No. I, I don't want to. I, I'm very happy, hundredaire, thousandaire. I'm very, very happy. I'm content. What my Mondays look like compared to my buddies who make millions and hundreds of thousands, it's very different. I'm not in a rush anywhere. Uh, Mondays really have, time is a social construct. Yep. Time doesn't exist for me because I don't have to be anywhere at a certain time that I haven't agreed to. I'm mm. not on somebody else's clock. Mondays I, I cease to exist. Sometimes I don't know what it is, Monday or Wednesday. Right. My Fridays can be really busy, like a typical Monday that people complain about. And my Mondays are so boring that sometimes I think about getting a job just to socialize. That's crazy, man. Because <laughs> my friends are at work. Everybody's like, what do you guys do? Want to hang out? Like, dude, we're at work. And I'm like, mm. all right, well, I'm, I'm freaking bored. Now, I got a question for you before we yeah. close up, man. Um, how can we find you on Instagram? Uh, my personal one is J Shells, just J A Y underscore Shells, like seashells. And then headquarters is military, uh, H D Q T R S N Y C. Dope, dope, there dope, you got man. It. Dope. Check them out. And Nelson, um, last thing, man, last thing. Um, tell us real quick, briefly, about um, how was it working with Jay? It was it was amazing because um, when we first met, he was a straight shooter. So I knew he was going to get to the point, and it helped me narrow down the process. And to be quite easy, it was very easy working with him. I would assume it's easier when someone knows what they want. Yeah, right? it is. You I, don't I, have to sell them on I, it. Well, not just sell them, but I have to try to pull it out of them because they don't even know. When I, get, when I met you and you were already like, I want this for this reason. I need this many space. I need this car garage. It was on. I, I know that this is going to be fun and I'm, we're going to get what he wants. Magnificent, magnificent. Well, Jay, I want to definitely say congratulations on your on your property here in California. Thank you. And uh, Pilkin, uh, Pickin Nelson Pilkin. <laughs> <laughs> See, I told you this is raw, man. We, we keeping it real. The first podcast and we crushed it. Sit rep. The sit rep, man. Follow us on Instagram. Follow us on YouTube. The sit rep and also Veteran Homeowners Club. Gentlemen, this has been an honor for me to host you guys. This is the very Likewise. first one. I was yes. nervous. I had to get my tasty beverage <laughs> out. But guess what? You guys killed it for us. I really appreciate you guys. And then once again, uh, thank you guys for tuning in to the Sit Rep Podcast. Okay, follow us on uh, Instagram and YouTube. And then also follow Facebook, like. Veteran Homeowners Club. We're doing uh, community service, outreach, scholarships, the whole nine. And we're bringing real veterans in business. We're talking about the home buying process, the entire home buying process, and the investments um, and we're bringing so many people. Make sure you subscribe. Hey, the sit rep out. Oorah. Uh. <laughs>